What is AWS Step Functions? It is an orchestration service that lets you model workflows as state machines, often by orchestrating and running a group of Lambda functions in a particular order and piping the output from one function to the next, or implement branching logic as part of the workflow and make decisions based on the current state of the execution, or provide robust error handling and retries without being constrained by the function's timeout setting. Or to use callback patterns to keep human operators in the loop, allowing you to suspend a workflow and wait for their input. Or to process large amounts of data in parallel, such as a map reduce job. The possibility is really endless, and step functions will manage the state of your execution, propagate it from one state to the next, and keep track of where you are in the execution, and give you a scalable and resilient platform to build your application on so you can focus on your business logic instead of infrastructure. And out of the box, it provides a detailed audit history for every execution as well. You can design your state machine using a JSON-based language called ASL or Amazon State Language. You can also visualize the workflow in the Step Functions console or to design a new workflow step-by-step -step using the Visual Designer, which I find quite useful when collaborating with business stakeholders so we don't get distracted by the JSON syntax, and then I can take the JSON definition for the state machine that we've designed together and copy them into my infrastructure as code tool so that I have something that is source controlled and can be easily deployed to different environments and AWS accounts. And when you execute a workflow, you can track its progress in the step functions console using the visualization tool. If you have branching logic like this tool here, you can see the path and execution took. And you can see the input and output for every single step so you can easily figure out what's going on and why a branching decision was made. Step functions record up to 25,000 events in the execution history, when a state started, when it ended, and so on. So you have a detailed audit history, which is great for debugging. And for Lambda invocations, you also have a shortcut to the function and its logs in CloudWatch. And finally, in terms of terminology, Every step an execution took is called a state transition, including the start and end states. And in terms of pricing, you're charged by the number of state transitions at a rate of $25 per million, which makes it one of the more expensive services on AWS. And it can be significantly more expensive than Lambda, which is why back in 2019, AWS introduced the express workflows. A standard workflow can run for a whole year, which is useful when you have workflows that require human intervention like approving a holiday request, which you can implement using callback patterns that suspend an execution and wait for a signal, which can be someone clicking a link in the email or a microservice processing a message in a queue. Standard workflows support exactly one's execution by execution name. So if you want to make sure, say an order is processed only once, then you can do that by using the order ID as the execution name. And as I mentioned already, you're charged by the number of state transitions. So in our example here, we will be charged for five state transitions, including the start and end states at a rate of $25 per million. Express workflows, on the other hand, can only run for five minutes and doesn't support callback patterns. And its execution semantic is at least once for asynchronous executions or at most once for synchronous executions. And it is charged based on the number of executions how long they run for and how much memory was used. And this pricing model is actually very similar to Lambda, but it's worth noting that Express Workflows doesn't actually use Lambda functions under the hood. And finally, Express Workflows can be executed synchronously, which is a really useful feature because you can now use API Gateway to start an execution, wait for it to finish, and then return the output of the execution in the HTTP response to its caller without having to put a Lambda function in between this is not possible with standard workflows, which would have required multiple round trips, one to start the execution and capture the returned execution ID, and then to recursively poll the execution, which might take a while to run until eventually it's finished, and then you're able to capture the output of the execution. So that's standard versus express workflows. In summary, standard workflows are best for business critical workflows like taking payments because its high maximum duration allows for ample retries with exponential backoff to give the operation every chance to succeed. And the exactly once execution means you get deduplication out of the box, 
which is often a business requirement for workflows such as payment processing. But it's perhaps not as well suited for high throughput scenarios because of its relatively low rate limit for the number of state transitions and executions you can start per second, plus the high cost for per million state transitions. And that's where Express Workflows shine and is what it's designed for. And Express Workflows can be very cost effective for workflows with a lot of state transitions because it doesn't charge by the number of state transitions. However, its limited max duration of 5 minutes and its execution semantics makes it a bad fit for many use cases. So the tool seems to be catering for very different use cases, but it's actually possible to combine them together such that you get the best of both worlds and mitigate their individual weaknesses by encapsulating the fast moving parts of the workflow with lots of rapid state transitions into an express workflow and nest it as a step inside a parent standard workflow so that you get the exactly once execution semantic from standard workflows and you handle all the slow reacting parts with those long waiting and the callbacks inside the parent standard workflow and so you get to have your cake and eat it too. But at this point, you might be wondering, since the Lambda function can run for 15 minutes at a time, which is good enough for most cases, why not just use the Lambda function instead? And that's a great question, and I will address that in my next video. Subscribe and click the notification bell so you don't miss out when the video comes out. Okay, I'll see you next time. Hi, I hope you have enjoyed this video, and if you do, why not check out these other videos and learn more about serverless development.